All right, so we are reading chapter 27 of the book of 2 Nephi. So all of this very clear imagery of Isaiah is finally coming to an end. And <laughs> Nephi's like, well, that was my hometown. And I'm familiar with all the things going on there, the people and the places. So the words of Isaiah made a lot more sense to, to Nephi. And as we were talking about it, we learned about the history for us. It started to make a lot more sense, too. But in this one, this is from, uh, we have these words of Isaiah in the Old Testament in chapter 29 of the book of Isaiah, um, but he's getting it from the plates of brass that they had. And in this vision, Isaiah sees a book that would come forth in the last days before the second coming. And this book was going to be a great blessing to the world. But behold, in the last days, or in the days of the Gentiles, yea, behold, all the nations of the Gentiles and also the Jews, both those who shall come upon this land and those who shall be upon other lands. So what's this land? The America. The America. Yeah. And yea, even upon all the lands of the earth. Behold, they will be drunken with iniquity and all manner of abominations. So in the last days, how's the earth going to be? Bad. Pretty bad. The world's going to be engaging in all kind of iniquity and abominations. But let's see what's going to happen. Verse 2. And when that day shall come, they shall be visited of the Lord, hosts with thunder and with earthquake and with a great noise, and with storm and with tempest and with the flame of devour, devour, devouring fire. Yeah, so what's the Lord going to send on the earth because of all this wickedness? What else? Earthquake, natural disasters. And all the nations that fight against Zion and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. Yea, it shall be unto them, even as unto a hungry man which dreameth. And behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or like unto a thirsty man which dreameth. And behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint. And his soul hath appetite. Yea, even so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. So there's going to be people in our day who are like, Oh, you don't need to go to church. Come listen to us instead. We'll give you the knowledge and information you need. So you go and you hear and you eat that food and that water that they're giving you. But after hearing it and partaking of what their message is, you walk away feeling what? Hungry. Hungry still. Do you feel satisfied when you hear these worldly messages? No. No. So that's how it is for all the people who reject God's word and pursue worldly things, worldly knowledge, worldly information. They'll learn and learn and learn and learn like somebody eating and eating and eating, but never feeling what? Full. Full, right? Or a thirsty person who's drinking and drinking and drinking, but still always feeling thirsty. It's the gospel that causes us to feel fulfilled. When we learn it, it's like, oh, we can finally uh, feel satisfied, right? But a lot of these people who are worldly, they say, oh, don't go there, listen to us. And the people who follow end up like eating and drinking, but not feeling not fulfilled, right? For behold, all ye that do with iniquity, stay yourselves and wonder, for ye shall cry out and cry, yea, ye shall be drunken, but not with wine. So all of you who do wickedy, stand back and watch. And all the things that are going to happen are going to cause you to what? Cry. And what's going to make the world cry in the last days? The judgment of God. Yeah, kind of judgments of God. It says because they're drunken. And they're drunken with what? They're kind of staggering in their lives because of their what? Drink. Wickedness. What is it? The wickedness. That is correct. So they're drunken on their wickedness. Right, so when somebody's drunk with alcohol, they can't walk straight, they fall down, they can't think straight. And that's how people live their lives when they're kind of deep in sin. They're having a lot of problems, they're kind of tripping and falling, they're having a lot of problems in their life. But they're not drunken on alcohol, they're drunken on just the wickedness. And the judgment comes and kind of leads to, to the consequences of their actions and a lot of suffering because of it. For behold, the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of a deep sleep. For behold, ye have closed your eyes, and ye have rejected the prophets. And your rulers and the seers hath he covered because of your iniquity. Right? So is God giving revelation to the world? 
when they're in this wicked state? No. Nope. That means they're not receiving revelation because the people have rejected who? <laughs> and the? Not listening to the prophets. Not listening to the prophets, right? So what do we call that period of time when there weren't prophets and apostles on the earth? The apostasy. The great apostasy, that's right. And that was the deep sleep that Why God put it? on the earth. Why is it called apostasy? Apostasy means to, to pull away from God. It means to apostatize. And because it, the world pulled away from God, that was the great apostasy and there was a deep sleep. Verse 6. What is God going to do after the days of this great apostasy? And it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall bring forth unto you the words of a book, and they shall be the words of them which have spoken. So what is God going to do during this period? The world's in this apostasy. They don't have revelation. God is going to do what? Because they don't have the gospel. He's going to put his word in a book. He's going to put his word in a book. Hmm. What is this book? Verse 7. And behold, the book shall be sealed. And in the book shall be a revelation from God from the beginning of the world to the ending thereof. So what is this sealed book mentioned here? Which scriptures? Which scriptures? I mean, the world already had the Bible, right? So what's this other book that seems to be coming in the last days? Because during the, this whole period of the apostasy, from the earliest days, the Bible was being passed around. So what's this book that's coming? The Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon. A lot of people forget. Did Joseph Smith translate the entire set of plates? No. No. He was told to just translate a portion for us to have today to prepare ourselves for the second coming. The rest of the plates were? Sealed. They were sealed. So Isaiah I is seeing it. these plates coming forth and seeing in his vision, not only a portion is being revealed in this book being given to the earth, but the rest is actually did, sealed. Did Joseph Smith read it? Uh, probably not. My guess is probably not. Because for this period, it was meant to be sealed. It'll probably be revealed when Christ comes again and we're prepared for more knowledge and revelation. Um, but there's all these teachings that were given to the ancient prophets, all these teachings that Mormon included in his record, but God told Joseph Smith, this is the only section that people need to prepare for my second coming. So the rest is going to stay sealed. Wherefore, because of the things which are sealed up, the things which are sealed shall not be delivered in the day of the wickedness and abominations of the people, before the book shall be kept from them. So are we going to get the whole set of plates or just a portion? A portion. A portion, yeah. But the book shall be delivered unto a man. Hmm, who is this person? Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. And he shall deliver the words of the book. What did Joseph Smith do? He delivered them to people. That's right. He made it available to the rest of the world. Which are the words of those who have slumbered in the dust. Who are those people who were in the dust? Nephites. I'm sorry, who? The Nephites. The Nephites. Is it the words of prophets from the Middle East? Israel? No. No, it's the words of prophets where? In the Although you could argue that Lehi was from the Middle East. We don't want to get caught up in the specifics. So it says that these words contain the words of people who slumbered in the dust who were the people who lived here in the Americas. And it says, and he shall deliver these words unto another. Was Joseph Smith the only person who saw these plates? <laughs> no. Let's see, let's see what this who these other people are. Verse 10. But the words which are sealed, he shall not deliver. Neither shall he deliver the book, for the book shall be sealed by the power of God and the revelation which was sealed shall be kept in the book until the um, due time of the Lord, that they may come forth, for behold, they reveal all things from the foundation of the world until the end thereof. So when will the sealed portion be made available? It says the own due time of the Lord. We can just guess when, but he knows when. So when uh, Joe Smith was done with the translation, what did he do with the plates? He gave them back to Moroni. Yes. So Moroni apparently has them somewhere. And when God is ready for the sealed portion, they're going to what? Take it out. Bring those plates back out. And the day cometh that the words of the book which were sealed shall be read upon the housetops 
and they shall be read by the power of Christ. And all things shall be revealed unto the children of men, which ever have been among the children of men, and which ever will be even unto the end of the earth. So who's going to get the words of the sealed portion of the record? The children of men. So who's that? <laughs> if this happens during the second coming, it's everyone who... Righteous! Who's here during that time. So who's righteous? And it's going to be by the power of God, meaning the priesthood. So it'll not really be church leaders of the time teaching these things to the people. Wherefore, at that day, when the book shall be delivered unto the man whom I have spoken, the book shall be hid from the eyes of the world, that the eyes of none shall be folded, save it be the three witnesses shall be folded by the power of God, besides him to whom the book shall be delivered. And they shall testify to the truth of the book and the things there. So who else was going to see these plates? Three witnesses. Three witnesses. And they turned out to be Martin Harris, Oliver Cowdery, and David Whitmer. And did they actually hold and touch the plates themselves? Yes. They sure did. And they gave their witness and testimony of those things in the beginning uh, of the Book of Mormon. You have the testimony of the three witnesses. And there is none other which shall view it, save it be a few, according to the will of God. Who else got to see the plates? And eight else? other people. And eight other people. So how many total saw and held the plates? Twelve. 12 people. 3 and 8 is 11, plus Joseph Smith. Is 12. To bear testimony of his word unto the children of men. He gave their testimony to the Lord. For the Lord God has said that the words of the faithful should speak as if it were from the dead. So when people give their witness and write it down, even after they die, their words, what? Spread. Spread and continue. That's right. As if they're speaking from the dust or from the dead, their words continue on. Wherefore the Lord God will proceed to be the words of the book, and in the mouth of as many witnesses as seemeth him good will he establish his word, and woe be unto him that rejecteth the word of God. Mm -hmm. So who are the witnesses who are bringing forth the words of the Book of Mormon today? Us! Who? Us! Us, right? So we get to be Us these witnesses today. today, right? But behold, it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall say unto him to whom he shall deliver the book, Take these words which are not sealed, and deliver them to another, that he may show them unto the learned, saying, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And the learned shall say, Bring hither the book, and I will read them. So Isaiah sees that someone else is going to see the words of the book, and something's going to happen. Verse 16. And now, because of the glory of the world, and to get gain, Will they say this and not for the glory of God? So this person is going to get the words. Are they going to read it for the purpose of glorifying God? Huh? No. No, they're going to do it for what? Money. Money. Try to get, you know, prestige and status and money for themselves. Right? And the man shall say, I, I cannot bring the so the learned man is going to say, bring me the book, and the person is going to say, I can't, the book is sealed. Then shall the man say, I cannot read the book. So this learned my person is going, well, I can't read a sealed book. But there's all kinds of people who try to get copies of the Book of Mormon just to, you know, tear it down, to rip it apart. They read it, but they don't really read it. So anybody who gets a copy of the Book of Mormon to read it just to tear it apart isn't in the spirit of humility to actually receive a confirmation of the Holy Ghost. We want to read it with a desire to know. We want to pray to know if it's true. And anybody who reads it for any other reason is like Professor Anton doing it for worldly reasons. And the Holy Ghost isn't going to bless people who aren't desirous to follow the Lord uh, in that way. Wherefore it shall come to pass that the Lord God will deliver again the book and the words thereof to him that is not learned. So the more humble people of the earth, and the man that is not learned shall say, I'm not learned. Who was the not learned man who got these plates? Did he have a lot of formal education like this professor? No. Why would God choose someone with education rather than someone who did have education because he 
can know Joseph Smith was a righteous man. Yeah. And if Professor Anton interpreted it, the world would say, wow, Professor Anton is really great. But when a person without education, without knowledge translates it, we say, who is pretty great? Jesus. God. So God uses people who can't do things on their own and uses them to perform great things so we can give the glory to Heavenly Father and know that it's coming from Him. Then shall the Lord God say unto him, The land shall not read them, for they have rejected them, and I am able to do mine own, own work. Wherefore thou shalt read the word which I shall give unto thee. Yeah, does God need really smart people doing his work, technically? I'm sure it's good when smart people are involved in the work, but does God need that? No. He says, I'm able to do what? By myself. My own work. I could have the, mo the most weak and unintelligent person on the planet, and God could perform great things with even that person. So if you guys ever feel like, I don't have, I'm not talented enough, I'm not good enough, God can't use me for anything. Is that true? No, He can use anybody. Does that mean we shouldn't try and develop our talents and abilities in life? No, of course we want to grow, we want to progress, we want to develop our abilities. But we should never feel like we're not good enough to do the work of the Lord, because the Lord is able to give us what we need to do His work. Touch not the things which are sealed, for I will bring them forth in my own due time. For I will show unto the children of men that I am able to do my own work. Wherefore, when thou hast read the work which I have commanded thee, and obtained the witness is that I promised unto thee, then shalt thou seal up the book again, and hide it up unto me, that I may preserve the words which thou hast not read, or shall see fit in my own wisdom, for seal all things unto the children of men. So when he was done with the translation, what did he do? Gave them back, and they're going to be gone forever? No. What does this verse say? When the Lord chooses. Yeah. For behold, I am God, and I am a God of miracles. And I will show unto the world that I am the same, yesterday, today, and forever. And I work not among the children of men, save it be according to their faith. If you have a knowledgeable person who lacks faith, or an uneducated person who does have faith, which one is God going to choose? The uneducated one. The one who has the faith, right? If you have an educated person with faith and an uneducated person who doesn't have faith, which one is God going to choose? The educated person. The educated one. Why? Because he has faith. He's the one with the faith. And because of that faith, God can use them to perform great miracles. And again it shall come to pass that the Lord shall say unto him, that shall be the word that shall be to be a great him. For as much as this people draw near unto me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. These are the words that were quoted by Jesus Christ in the first vision. It was during the first vision that uh, Joseph Smith yeah, when he asked, was told yeah. that the world draws near, near to me with their lips, with their but their hearts are far. are far from me, meaning they say my name in their churches a lot, but are they really following me? No. No. So what was Joseph Smith called to do? Fix that. Translate the place. Restore the church. Restore the church. Therefore I will proceed to do marvelous work among this people. He had marvelous work and wonders. The wisdom of their wives and the learned shall perish, and the understanding of their prudence shall be hid. What's this marvelous work though? The Lord's going to do in the last days. The restoration of the church. The restoration of the church. And woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us and who knoweth us? So I can do all kinds of wicked things. No one's going to know. Is that true? No. Jesus says, and Jesus. Jesus is going to know. And they also say, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. But behold, I will show unto them, saith the Lord of hosts, that I know all their works. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? So the world says, God isn't real, God doesn't know anything, but God created us. 
does so a lot of things. We're the thing that's created saying the creator doesn't know anything. Like a statue saying the sculptor doesn't know anything. So God, the creator of all things, it's, it's a sign of just how much he does know and what we should love. Follow him. Follow him. But behold, saith the Lord of hosts, I will show unto the children of men that it is yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be returned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a fort. So was there a lot of destruction that came over the house of Israel yeah. because of their wickedness? Lebanon is also part of the Middle East, so when it says Lebanon will be fruitful again, that means what will happen in, uh, in the Middle East for the house of Israel. Israel. They'll be what one day? Gathered. Gathered. They'll be restored, right? They'll be a fruitful field once again. And this marvelous work and a wonder is going to be what's going to help them what? Gathered. Gathered. Can they be gathered to the Lord if the word of the Lord isn't on the earth? No. So in order to gather his people to himself, he has to establish what on the earth first? The church. The church. So this marvelous work and a wonder is what's going to allow God's people to be gathered to him again. And not just here in the Americas, but also where? Israel. Israel. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. So what's going to happen? Does that mean literally deaf and blind? No. No. So what's going to happen? It's, they're spiritually deaf and blind. Mm -hmm. They can't hear the words of Christ. Are they still going to be deaf and blind? No. no. Why? Because the church is going to be restored. And they're going to have what? Well, oh, with God. Contained in what? A book. And which book? Which books? The Holy Bible and the Quran. That's right. Doctrine and Covenants, yeah, so the Great Christ, all of these revelations. So those who were spiritually deaf and blind can now hear and see. See, right? So the apostasy hear. would come to an end, right? There would finally be prophets on the earth again. And the meek also shall increase, and their joy shall be in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Well, it would be pretty special for that great apostasy to finally be at an end. Yeah. Are we pretty fortunate to have these teachings today to be able to read these things? Yeah. Today, absolutely. For assuredly as the Lord liveth, they shall see the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. So this is going to be restoration of the gospel is going to be prepare us for what day? The second coming. Yeah, when all the terrible things will be taken from the earth. And they that make a man and of under for a word and lay a snare for him. That would prove this in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of not. Yeah, so a lot of people are going to be doing bad things and treating each other badly, but I like what this chapter is teaching us, that people who read the Book of Mormon, read the scriptures, gain a testimony, are they going to be, are they going to feel motivated to keep being mean to others, being an offender, setting a snare and a trap for people, or are they going to want to help and serve people? They're going to want to help and serve people. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. Who's Jacob? Israel. Jacob slash Israel. They're going to no longer be ashamed because they're coming. They're no longer going to be ashamed. That's right, because they'll be able to come back to the Lord. When he sees his children, the work of my hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, the fear of God of Israel. So what are people going to be doing? Sanctify. Sanctify the name of the Lord. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understand. And they that murmured shall learn doctrine. So all the people who stumbled during the great apostasy will finally have the truth of the gospel again because the Book of Mormon will help clarify the principles of the gospel and the church will be established, established on the earth again. Click the subscribe button. Leave a like.